Hello, everybody, um, and welcome to another segment of our live webinar series. Um, my name is Richard. Um, I'm the VP of Sales here at PSPDF Kit. Um, first off, apologies about the mix up on timing. Um, we got our time zones a little backwards. <laughs> PSPDF Kit is a distributed company, so we have people all around the world. So, um, hope you're able to join us today. If not, um, you should be getting a recording coming in soon. Um, after this finishes up, I will give a couple more seconds to allow people to join. Um, a few things about how we typically run these webinars, if it's the first time that you're joining us. Um, we'll cover a number of different things. One will be a little bit about the company. Um, we'll go into one of our flagship products, which is our, our uh, framework to support uh, PDF rendering and manipulation of web applications. Um, uh, we'll talk a little bit about resources, support, things like that. Um, but throughout the entire webinar, we have someone behind the scenes, um, Guillermo, who is one of our um, you know, senior web engineers who can help out with any technical questions if you'd like to see something. So as we go along, feel free to ask questions, drop stuff in the chat. At the end of all this, I'll drop my information as well. So if you want to have a a follow-up conversation or you know talk specifically about something i'm happy to do that as well or connect you with the team so great so go ahead and get started um looks like we've got about a good amount of people who have joined um great to see some people that we're talking to currently about adding ps pdf kit to your um your tech stack so uh it's always good to get a chance to talk in person so Great. So uh, sharing my screen right now, um, I'm on the PSPDF Kit website, um, so our, our landing page. Um, a little bit about the company. PSPDF Kit's been in this space for, you know, roughly a, uh, roughly a little bit over a decade. Um, we entered the market supporting iOS applications when the mobile app craze was going pretty crazy. There wasn't a lot of great solutions for, you know, viewing and manipulating documents in, 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 in mobile apps. And so... Our progression followed that we kept building out more and more products to support different types of applications where, um, you know, inevitably a lot of our, our current volume right now is addressing, you know, web apps. You know, the, the industry has changed so much in the past couple of years where, you know, everything from your TV to your refrigerator um, can support a web browser. So being able to do you know, viewing, manipulation, signing, things like that in a web app has become more and more valuable as, as people continue to go paperless. So I'll be spending a little time on that. Um, but as you as you heard, we've been in the space for a little bit over the decade. You know, that's been uh, attributed to some of our, our, our biggest clients here um, in different spaces, you know, Autodesk and construction and engineering, you know, Disney, DocuSign, um, as long along with you know dropbox ibm and, and latanza so you know we're, we're really glad to see you know so many different industries that we've been able to reach as people you know want to bring in document you know rendering and manipulation in, inside their applications for a number of reasons so cool so uh products wise we'll, we'll jump in a little bit um hopefully the fidelity on on my web browser is good for everybody so you know why are a few reasons why you know you might be looking at PSPDF kit? Uh, you know, one is you know a lot of people use a number of different applications. You know, there's a lot of great desktop applications, a lot of great mobile applications to to view and edit PDFs. But the complexity of having you know a separate application to do this can can be kind of cumbersome. It could be you know it could lead you susceptible to you know security issues that documents are leaving, you know, your cloud going to somebody else's. So we see people coming to us for all types of reasons um, and wanting to add you know, a, a, a developer tool to, to do this. So on the left-hand side, you can see that we've, we've, we've done our work in bringing our technology that I'll show today to a lot of different kind of application types. So you know, web being the top two here where we see a lot of our inbound um, volume coming from uh, skipping past GD picture. We've got mobile applications like iOS, Android, Windows, Mac Catalyst. These are all, you know, 
tailored down to the the nitty gritty details that the UI and the UX feels like something you would expect from someone using that type of device. So, you know, a lot of our goals here at PSPF Kit is that we stay behind the scenes so that you're able to, you know, really put your application forward um, and things like that. Aside from that, you know, we're we're continuing to adapt in the industry with tools like Flutter and React Native as we see, you know, growing adoption in the market for those type of hybrid technologies. Um, additionally to that, we have, you know, different different tools that a lot of people use across different industries like Salesforce, SharePoint, Teams, things like that that just don't have great native PDF support, but it is such a document centric um, repository. So yeah, uh, a lot of things there, you know, Maui as well, as we've seen an option from Windows heading in that direction. Um, you know, a lot of different front end options, but you know, one of the cool things about web is web can serve all these, which is why we usually cover it on these webinar. Um, additionally, um, which we have other webinar series about, we have a bunch of server side libraries as well for languages such as Java, Linux, Node.js, .NET that allows like programmatically and batch processing documents as well. So wonderful. Um, I'll check the questions in the chat. I think we're good to go still. So we'll dive in. So on our front page, we have an ability to go into our web demo, which is here, which is essentially um, a showcase that we've built ourselves to showcase our web framework. So I'll clear out my, uh, I'll clear this out. But essentially what it does is it allows um, you to test out a number of different functionalities that we offer. Okay, so when you use PSPDF kit, what you're really getting is this this iframe here. Um, the sidebar is a custom example that we've put in to kind of navigate you through. But what you're really getting is the iframe um, that's that's here. Um, and what that does, it goes into your application on your web page. So anytime you open a document, you render it in our UI, and you're you're able to do that. So I'm gonna I'm gonna shrink it down a little bit for us. Okay, so. Moving back to our component page, we do a lot with PDFs, uh, a lot, you know, and, and we continue to iterate. We, you know, what you're looking at here is basically a full fledged feature list of like everything that our web SDK can do. So I'm going to walk you through a lot of that today. Um, but what makes us unique is you can license our framework based on this too. So you're able to navigate different things of like, I just need to view PDFs, I just need to annotate, I need to sign, I need to compress, you know, we're able to give you a lot of these, these fluid licenses that you can tailor um, kind of the package you want rather than, you know, paying $15 a month, $300 a month for something that you may only need one or two components. So um, that you see a lot of end user tools doing in the market. Okay. So Moving into that, so uh, we're going to start with our viewer. So our, our viewer is built off of an open source um, tool called PDF Hume. Uh, PDF Hume is owned and uh, maintained by Google. Google acquired it several years ago and open sourced it. Um, it's the rendering engine you see in Chrome, which is the most popular browser in the world with the most users. So what we did over 10 years ago is, you know, we were looking for something that would be adaptable to basically what we wanted to achieve in the industry. And so we took PDF Hume, we forked off of it. And essentially over the past 10 to 15 years, we've built on top of it. Uh, PDF Hume, if you've used it in the Chrome browser, allows you to view PDFs. Uh, and, and that's really how far you can get with it. But everything we've done here has been additional development from our engineering team to, to add support for manipulating PDFs on top of uh, PDF Hume. Um, this is, uh, it's wonderful to be built off of PDF Hume because one, it's backed by Google and, you know, uh, they seem to be, um, a well-known entity for, um, you know, uh, developer tools. It also exposes it to, you know, millions of different users so that, you know, any type of security threats, things like that are usually ironed out by just, you know, so many people using it throughout the day. And it also gives us the ability also to contribute back to the, the open source project as well. So let's get into viewing. So our viewer. So our, our viewer is going to take this and render your PDF in your in your application in an iframe. After you're viewing, you've got a couple of different tools to help you navigate the PDF. So one would be a thumbnail. So we we generate the thumbnails of the PDF. You're able to resize that sidebar to to quickly navigate through, um, so you can find the page that you want. 
We also have the ability to pull outlines. You know, PSPDF kit does a lot of things adhering to the PDF specification. So if there's an outline that's been built on the PDF, we're going to pick that up and give you it as well in PSPDF kit. Vice versa, a lot of things you do with PSPDF kit, if you take us out of our viewer and upload it in another viewer, those things are going to persist as well. Um, you know, bookmarks are certainly important as well when you're working with PDFs. If you need to, you know, remember this page, you can create bookmarks and then, you know, if you're, you're down here and you want to pop back up, that's, that's good. So some of our standard viewer, viewer functionalities. Okay. Uh, we also have a read only annotation list. So if you want to track like who's done what to the PDF, here you can see that, you know, John did some text annotations. You can date and timestamp that. And then one of the really cool things about PSPDF kit is anything we expose on the front end, you can do programmatically through an API structure on the back end. So, you know, annotation, things like that. If you see me demoing it today, you can do it programmatically through some sort of batch process in the back end as well using our APIs. And we expose all that in our documentation. Okay. Uh, navigating through the, the PDF, super important. Um, being able to fit the PDF to size, zooming in, zooming out. Um, you know, we take a lot of effort to make the fidelity and the quality of the rendering pretty good. So, you know, yes, I'm zooming in on the letter A, but the, the idea is that, you know, when you have some construction or engineering drawings and you have to get down pretty, pretty, um, pretty far into being able to zoom to get the uh, document um, clear, we want to make sure it, the fidelity is good. Okay. Uh, being able to pan through the pages. That's part of our viewer. Other viewer features would be, you know, being able to print um, if you got to, you know, print something um, and then searching within the PDF as well. So if we want to be able to search and then you know, navigate through the document um, anytime, that's uh, it's very important. And then download as well. So viewer features. So yeah, so viewers are kind of the base component that everything's built on. Um, you know, one of the questions we usually get on this is like, you know, what if I don't like your UI? What if I need to map it? change things, then yeah, no problem here um, whatsoever. So when we're looking at the user interface, you can do a lot of customization in terms of disabling certain functionalities. You know, we're using several DRM, so, you know, people trying to keep control of um, content. So, you know, let's remove downloading, let's remove exporting, let's remove printing, let's disable text selection. A lot of customization here. To, for you to have the look and feel of the workflow you want. So, you know, I can I can disable the toolbar buttons up top. I can maybe move stuff around based on what I want to present. So, you know, I have the ability to really um, give the impression that, in the workflow that I want. You can also theme it, you know, if you want to put it towards your, you know, your company colors or the theme of your, your, uh, your uh, application itself, um, as well as, Certain things like you know dark mode, um, you know switching to dark mode if you're um, working maybe at night, uh, being able to customize the sidebar and things like that. Um, you know, big thing we too that you know we talked about quickly about having a distributed team. You know, localization is really important to us to have you know our our SDK work in so many different languages because you know we have a global customer base as well. Aside from that, to kind of wrap up the viewer, you know, the last thing I, I would I will say is like, you know, PSP certificate is not only limited to PDFs. We are always expanding the different op, the file types that we can support. So right now we've got support for PDFs, uh, you know, PDF UA, PDF A. You know, we're also um, have support for image documents, including TIFFs, PNGs, JPEGs, as well as Office documents as well. So, you know, taking an Office document, ingesting it into PD, ingesting it into PSP, that will convert it for you, and then you can do the same tools that we're showing here. Okay. Um, we'll pause real quick about questions. You guys at MBM, I don't know. Blah, 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 blah. Yep, okay, MBM package, great. Guillermo looks like he's all over it. Thanks, Guillermo. Um, help me keep working on that. And the last thing, um, you know, uh, several years ago when I started here, um, you know, we saw most people doing mobile first. When I say mobile first, a lot of the applications they would build were, you know, a native iOS and native Android app, and then, you know, maybe a web app, things here. We've seen that kind of turn on its axis when you see most web apps coming first. And so, again, going back to, you know, a lot of things can run 
a web browser. So one of the things you can see is, you know, we have ways to, you know, test out our, you know, our web app um, on different types of devices. So this is how it would appear on an iPad, an iPad Pro, you know, a Pixel, things like that. So, you know, our UI is built to adapt to essentially um, understand what type of document that, um, or what type of device it's working on. So wonderful. Cool. So I don't see any more questions right now. So we'll dive into the next thing. So, you know, we, we covered viewer. Um, the next progression would be our annotations feature. So you can see that it's got 23 sub features, which all link to our documentation. Um, it's probably our most feature rich, um, our most feature rich component and where we see a lot of people in the industry coming to look for a vendor. Um, there's a couple good open source tools such as PDF Hume, which we are built off of. Um, it does require some front end development. There's PDF JS, which is a, a free open source viewer, but there's definitely limitations around fidelity, um, sometimes accuracy, uh, and then any type of maintenance, development, additional products, you're having to take that on in house or build on top of it. So it, it becomes a quite cost, ex cost exercise as soon as you have bugs or something like that because the PDF spec is very confusing it several hundred page long so annotations is really where people like we will typically spin up a viewer and then they'll go yeah we don't really want to build annotations let's go look at a vendor so annotations is something we see a lot of people coming to us for so uh, annotations there's a lot here to unpack so I'll try and go quickly here um, I guess the first one um, you can see it's just an ink annotation. So I'm circling, you know, one of our, our blog articles about building on, you know, PDF Hume. So it's a, it's a freehand ink annotation. When I click on the annotation, it pulls up our annotation inspector that gives me, you know, a lot of customizations about changing, you know, the, the color of the document, the backfill. I can then change, you know, the transparency of that backfill if I need to as well as like line thickness and things like that. And so, you know, we set defaults here by standard, but you can come in and set defaults for certain for certain annotations. Like you want this to be the default color, this the line thickness, things like that. And then you can always put kind of a note annotation on this of why you're doing it. So, you know, you're um, running the Google webinar on November 6th. Cool, so that's my note. So I'll put my note there um to kind of put why i made this annotation so ink annotation is probably the most common one um we do have other ones such as you know highlighting um also being able to highlight specific text um we'll jump down here and highlight the text okay so why is text highlighting an individual component it allows you to highlight the text and you can extract anything underneath it as well so if the document is an ocr or the text is searchable or extractable you can extract that from the the document as well so pretty cool um and then you know if you don't like anything you've done you know go back and erase it um and we can do that for sure we can erase anything we've been working on we'll go make this a little bit bigger eraser save time so cool wonderful so yeah those are kind of the core annotation components some of the more niche ones that you see um with pspdf kit is you know I'm gonna zoom in here if i highlight with my mouse trillions i get some popovers maybe to maybe i want to highlight it maybe i want to strike through you know some some text editing things like that underline it um, a lot of a lot of different things that you can you can do working with with the PSPDF kit in terms of annotations. Okay, uh, last couple ones, you know, at, you can add an image to a PDF. So let me see if I can find one real quick to upload from my desktop. So So you can add, you can essentially add um so here we go i'll add this image i've added an image annotation to the pdf i'm going to expand it and then i can move it around where i need to um so it's just an image annotation on top of the pdf in addition to that i can add a stamp i can 
you know, so there's approved, you know, the stamps are customizable as well. I think you'll hear a lot in this that things are customizable. So I can come in and put, you know, Richard stamp of approval. But that here, um, we use the same stamp template again as Adobe does. So again, that that cross platform, you know, uh, fidelity is really important to us. That you know, you move documents through different readers, that it works. Um, but you can also upload your own custom stamp design. And we have clients like we have a client that works in the insurance industry that they've created stamps that essentially. Um, are used to recreate car accidents and stuff for insurance policy. So like a lot of cool niche niche use cases that we see in the space. Um, other than that, we've got um, node annotations that we already kind of showed, text annotations, um, and then shape annotations as well. So you can you know draw shapes. Um, we get a little customizable in some industries where we've done like cloud annotations here. So you can see like done a cloud annotation so for that's specific to certain industries so wonderful that is the quick quick rundown on different annotation types um let's see we'll check the chat questions well this should be edible for reopening so um Great question, William. You actually have the option here. So you can you can flatten the the annotations into the document if you want. So if you want them to be a final version of the document, there's a way to make them not editable, or you can keep them editable. You kind of have the ability to set the permissions on the annotation of like what you want to do after that with PSPF kit. So it just depends on what kind of workflow you want to do. Uh, we have defaults, but you can override those defaults if you know you want certain people to have only read only access things like that so you can kind of navigate um how you want each annotation to work i think guillermo will probably respond to the chat and give you a little bit more information on that if there's documentation that he thinks might be helpful so cool wonderful so viewing and annotations we've covered the two core components that i think really kick-started us into this space you know 10 15 years ago um the one of the largest i think inbound I think interest that we see right now is around signing some sort of signing process where it's like i want to do some sort of e-signature process i want to uh paying a lot of money to my e-signature provider they're charging me an arm and a leg for each envelope regardless if i sign it or not so we've done some some work around um, pdf form um, support as well as signature support to kind of both give you uh, an option to uh, use PSP that can set. So, so a PDF form, essentially, uh, what we will we adhere to PDF Acro forms, which is the PDF spec. PDF Acro forms is essentially a way to bind an annotation to a certain part of the PDF. So what that means is like, I'm going to ask my end users to put a certain type of information at a certain place. And I want to be able to track that. I want to be able to manipulate that data. So Forms are great. So you're looking at a PDF form right here that essentially we've already pre-populated it from a database. So, you know, John Appleseed uh, lives in Fort Wayne. What you're able to do is map these form fields to a database for first name, last name, things like that. So if you have a large amount of form filling, you can pre-populate or programmatically pre-fill these form fields based on what you're getting um, to help, you know, your end users move quickly through these types of processes. On the other side, if you're not doing this, I can take all this information and when I hit a submit button or something like that, this maps to, you know, wherever I want to drop this. Maybe it's a CSV file. I don't I don't know. You have the ability to control the data. So PSP Dev Kit really is just kind of the vehicle to move your information, move your documents the way you want to. So, yeah, you can see, you know, we have text boxes. We have you know, things like that. We do um, we do check boxes. You know, radio buttons are fully supported. Um, all types of different form fields that you can you can do. And then, you know, one of the opportunities we saw in the market is like, what about creating forms? Like, what about being able to take an existing form and manipulate it? So maybe I don't want this to be a, uh, I don't want this to be a text field anymore. I want it to be a date and time field. So I'm going to click this. I'm going to pull it over here under date and I'm going to change it. So. Uh, I can do the form field name. I can change how I want to. Um, so, you know, we'll change this formatting. I can then change the appearance of it as well. And then I can, I can, 
I can add, I don't want to delete it. I, I can add this to the document. So now I've changed this from a text field to a date field using the form creator UI. Um, I can maybe, you know, let's say I need, I want to add another si signature box right here because I want to have two signatures on this. So I'm going to shrink this one down. So maybe this will be signature one. This will be signature two. Um, and I can add text there to kind of add it as well. So I have the ability through a UI perspective to create and manipulate an existing form, which is which is really cool. I could ask I could also programmatically add this as well. So maybe I have a document that I signed. Maybe I programmatically add a signature box to the bottom left hand side. So you know I've got create form here. I can turn this off now. So then I'm I'm filling out stuff like here. I can I can I've got the date field. So you know maybe today will be Maybe today, I'll, I'll pick the date, so that pops up. Unfortunately, the date picker doesn't show up, I'm sorry, but um, I use the date picker and I put the date there. So form creation is, is a big part of what we're seeing a lot of people want to use this for. Um, additionally, then you go into things like signatures. So uh, we provide two different types of signatures. Um, one is, an electronic signature. So basically, if you clicked on the document and you saw, there's two ways to do it. You could do it through a, a form field that's designated as a signature box. I click on it, I sign it, um, and then I drop the I drop the ink signature on the PDF. I auto size it to the field, and it's done. I can also, you know, come back in here and delete this. I can add it through an image. I could also type my signature as well, um, and then put it in. Alternatively, we also have a toolbar item called these signatures that I could I could sign real quick, and then I could drag and drop um, that into the box as well. Or if I you know I need to initial the corner, I can do this. So this is an e signature, and then I can burn that into the PDF. I can flatten that into PDF. I can do whatever I want with it. I can pull timestamps on when it was done, things like that. So you can see annotation log like here it was done here. Okay, so. On top of that, we do something called a digital signature. So what a digital signature does is I'm able to sign the document with an e-signature function. After I hit finish signing, PSP certificate takes your digital certificates and applies it to the document and then tells everyone who interacts with the document that it's valid, it hasn't been manipulated, nothing has been done to the document, which is really cool. Um, and then if I would bring up this document anywhere else and then I would change it, the document is basically invalidated and we can tell you that as well. So we definitely allow the ability to, you know, manipulate and customize, you know, an e-signature process. You know, if you want to build the next DocuSign, you could do that with PSPDF kit. So wonderful. We're cranking through, talking about the MPA MPM package, the size of it. Thanks, Eric, for asking questions. We really appreciate it. Um, doo -doo -doo. Thanks, Peter, for jumping around for a little bit. A little bit. Um, we'll keep moving on. So we've made it through about half. The, the rest of this stuff here gets a little niche um, for sure. Um, yeah, William, this will be recorded. It'll send to your email. If you haven't seen it in about a couple of days, check your spam folder. Sometimes it ends up there, so you will get this. We can also set up a time with our sales team as well if you want to do that as well. So um, going to fly through a couple a couple of these components. So document editor, one of the, the core components that we see with with um, a lot of people using a third-party um, third party tool is uh, merging documents. It's, it's, it's something that's super annoying. Um, and the fact that like I've got documents, all right, I'm missing a page. Okay, let me go out. Let me put it in another document. Let me merge everything together. Let me bring it back. So with the document editor, basically, you have the ability to rearrange pages. You can delete pages. You can duplicate pages. You can do all this type of stuff that allows you to um, interact with the document itself. So it's super helpful in the fact that like you don't have to leave. PSPDF kit to really manipulate the document from a document perspective, moving pages, moving after merging. I'll, you know, I can come in here and import documents. So I'll import one here. Import, import. I did a product update. And then I can save over the existing copy I have, or I can create a new version. So I can save that. So the document editor allows me to do a lot of cool stuff like that. So here's a one pager we just sent to all our customers about some of the cool things we've done 
in the past couple of weeks. And then let's say I just didn't like that. I can use the document editor to crop that as well. So crop current page, cool. Wonderful, great stuff. Okay, document editor covered. All right, um, we'll keep moving through. We have some specific stuff. So we've already covered like the office files and things like that. So that's just essentially us being able to support different document types. So we'll get into some more of the niche stuff right now that I think is pretty cool. Um, we also do PDFA conversion if anyone's interested in that. Um, but going into something that we're really, really excited about, um, considering the lack of really good support for this in the space, excuse me, is content editing. So. Everything I've shown in the, the webinar thus far has really been adding an additional layer to the PDF. I'm adding an annotation layer. I'm adding a stamp. I'm adding something that I'm flattening into it. So what we what a lot of SDKs aren't able to do is touch the actual original document. You usually have to go back to the source document, whether, whether it's an HTML file, whether it's a Word file. You have to go back to the source file and fix it and so what happens if you're scanning a document in or something like that there's just so much complexity about like what happens with my source file is wrong um, but with content editing we can switch on content editing mode and pspf kit finds all the instances where there's text and allows you to now edit them and additionally put an additional layer on so i've clicked this i can now move text if i want to I can also go into an editing mode. So, you know, I don't want this to be this way. I want to say it's my November 16th webinar. Okay. It just gives you a lot more flexibility in terms of using more template based workflows. You know, if you have small hiccups, like that you converted something to a PDF, you're on the go and like uh, you, you, you spot an error. Instead of going back to the source document, you can actually come into the document itself and change things here. So yeah, we have the ability to change text. You can, you can match, you know, we have different fonts here, font colors, um, things like that, uh, as well as bold and italicized and things like that. So uh, yeah, really excited about this. Um, a lot of our customers are, are enjoying this. It's helping them kind of kill other tools they're using for this, and they're able to do it all within their application and then save a new version of it. So some cool stuff coming in the future for content editing as well to expand on this. But, you know, we, we really want to be uh, kind of on the forefront of content creation in um, your applications. Uh, still looking good on questions. Okay. Um, the next kind of niche one, it would be redaction. Um, so redaction is a funny one. Um, you know, to truly redact something from a PDF, you have to remove it from the document, which means it needs to be irreversible. Um, there's several instances in the space where we see people putting annotations on top of things. You flatten it, you open the document back up and the information is still there. The cool thing about PS PDF kit is when I'm removing something i'm actually removing it so this is a text area based redaction i'm applying it to it it's gone so if i download it open it up in chrome like the text is gone it's not selectable i can't search for it the text is gone i removed it from the document and so we've got a couple cool ways to do text you know you can search for certain things you can preview it but being able to redact um is quite important when you need to like irreversibly remove some sort of information. So maybe I need to remove this person's headshot. So, you know, why do we do this? We did it. Uh, FYI, we'll apply the redaction. We can even put a note. We're running the webinar today. Uh, we apply the redaction. So now I have that there. I can actually select the text that I want, pull that out, redact it as well. So a lot of a lot of fluidity around redacting things and things like that. Um, kind of a teaser into other things we do. We have a smart redaction tool that uses another another backend processing thing that can actually pre-process documents to go ahead and mark them for sensitive area data so like this is using one of our server products that says i've run all your documents here's the things you told me to auto detect i've found them do you want to redact them yep cool let's get it done um and, and you're moving through so it really helps cut down time processes things like that so 
All right, another question just popping in. What's the APA like to program out how it's section of the document? I think it's great. I think Guillermo can send this over in a second on that. Um, some of the more niche features that you'll see um, with PSP Dev Kit, um, we talked about it. We um, are in the space right now heavily in like construction and engineering. So like stuff like being able to take two documents. So as you see in the top right corner, I'm finding a certain grid on the document. And what I am attempting to do is compare. Here's the second version of the document. It's asking me to find roughly the same three points. Here we go. I overlay the overlay everything. And now I can see kind of the differences there where like I've got a different um, I've got a different um, wall there. So with 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 comparison document, I can overlay that. Um, so we also have now released an API for text-based comparison. Well, if you're interested in doing this same kind of um, same kind of operation with text, Do -do -do. Well, that's not good. Let's try. All right. All right, let's see if I can get this working. All right. So uh, measurements, I can come to one of our lighting pages and you can see that essentially what we're able to do is take, um, take different points on the PDF. So the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna calibrate the ruler um, and then Set the scale depending on what you're doing. Zoom in, and then from there, you know you're able to use the scale on the PDF itself to get it just right. Um, we even get down to the nitty gritty details to make sure it's it's as correct as possible. You can choose the unit of measurement. Um, so after everything's been calibrated, wonderful. Then we can come in on the PDF itself and um measure distances uh circumferences surface areas things like that there's all different types of types of things we can do to uh measure this this is not only in construction we've seen it in you know insurance and healthcare for like cardiographs and things like that there's a lot of different use cases for measuring distance real estate for different building codes like um insurance so yeah we, we found a lot of like, useful things using um measurement so cool so we're, we're, we're getting towards the end of time um you know there, there's usually one thing i always do like to leave everyone with um and you know that's just kind of how to navigate the website so you know if you haven't started on the journey of trying pspf kit we do do a full evaluation key you just have to come to the website hit get started and then walk through so today we worked on our web sdk let's say we're doing this in angular and it's a new project. We hit get started. It's going to walk you through our guide on how to download the NPM package, um, get it stand up, and then our instructions on how to do this. So you'll get access to every component I demo today. The PDF will be watermarked. That's removed when you move into a production version of PSPDF kit, but it gives you a chance to really, um, really work with our, 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 our technology. It supports our latest build, all the components, nothing's gatekeeped, you're good to go. Um, addition, we have um, very thorough documentation that you can you can come through. You just hit the documentation button and come here. Um, you come to the web SDK. We have an AI helper on the um, documentation part. We even have um, you know if you're looking at iOS and Android, we even have custom pre-made dem demos here. So if you wanted to watch a demo of iOS to see how it performs. You can do that. So here's PSPF Kit iOS. It's a catalog app that you know you can come in. Rich, that's me. And then you can come in and also play around with the iOS SDK too. So cool, awesome. Um, API design fully um, fully exposed. If you're looking for APIs and things like that. Okay. Um, last two things. Um, you know. 
notice the domain today, a lot of different industries. If you fall into one of these aviation, construction, education, et cetera, like go have one of a, go, go have a look at one of our solution pages. Um, it's super helpful in the fact that like, if you know, you're working for a government entity, we can kind of help you kind of visualize some workflows, you know, why PSP certificate is a good fit here. And then even at the bottom, we actually culminate a lot of the components that we think would be pertinent and why it would be pertinent to your use case. So like, you know, when you look at the list, it can be kind of, um, kind of daunting, but when we break it down to what we do, um, we can really help you, you know, build that for perfect workflow for your, for your customer. And then always get this question at the end. What about pricing? Um, uh, yeah, so pricing, it's a bespoke motion. You know, a lot of the triggers that we talked about today are mainly on the functionality. So we need to work with you to kind of figure out what functionality you need and kind of the workflow you're doing. Is it going to be internally at your company? Are you building a SaaS product? Are you a startup? There's a lot of factors we want to work with you with. So if you want, you just want to hit contact sales, come in here, tell us a little bit about the product. If you got an idea of what kind of app you're doing, that's super helpful. Um, and we can kind of help you uh, navigate that. You can always come here and schedule a call directly if you don't want to wait on an email. I think our team has a pretty good response time, um, but you can schedule calls um, directly if you wanted to talk to us tomorrow. Um, you can see some time slots. Apparently, I'm only available for a couple times, but hopefully you have more availability than I do. Um, we also provide technical support as well. So if you want to talk to a solutions engineer, you want to talk to Guillermo, who's on the back of this call right now, there's a lot of different options there, but yeah. Um, and, and that's PSP Dev Kit. Um, you know, one thing I always do when I kind of wind these down is give everyone the last chance to add questions. Um, I'm putting my contact information in the chat right now. If anybody wants to take it down, you're always welcome to call, email, anything to me direct. If you're going through evaluation and you're running into hurdles, um, you want to have a quick conversation. Um, been doing this for close to, to nine years now. So, you know, have a lot of opinions and, and feedback. I'm happy to pass along what I've seen other customers do to be successful. But great. Well, well this will wrap up another um series of our of our webinars um we do this about every two weeks um i'm also happy always happy also to organize a personal one with you and your company i can bring in more of the resources but i, I certainly appreciate um all the time um that y'all have put aside to spend with me and you know you should be getting a recording um coming soon and uh I look forward to next time. Thank you again and uh, enjoy the rest of your Thursday. Thanks.